we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the new uh, and improved version of uh, last week's uh, webinar. We faced some issues if you were with us last week. Uh, everything is resolved and we are ready to talk about inquiry-based learning through examples. Uh, we will present a student-centered methodology that invite, invites students to follow the steps of the scientific method. And uh, we couldn't think of anyone more suitable to talk about this issue than Dr. Rosa Doran, uh, who, to whom I will pass the mic immediately before I start bubbling about inquiry-based learning and give the floor to Rosa. Rosa. Thank you, Nikos. Yeah, so last week was I had a personal, very nice inquiry-based learning. So uh, we were doing the session and nothing worked and nobody knew why. So I had to discover all the glitches and uh, it happened that we had three glitches at the same time. So uh, I'm not going to spend my time explaining to you what happened, but it was fun. It took me two days to realize how many things can go wrong at the same time. But here we are again. Um, thank you for you who are coming back. Those of you that uh, will be listening to this uh, later on, um, you have an improved version of uh, this inquiry-based learning. Let me put the light out here a little bit so the contrast is better. Okay, so today the session is the dedicated to inquiry-based learning and um, I'll have the precious help here of Nikos and Gustavo who will help me uh, deliver this lesson. It is the first time, or actually the second time, because last week I tried it uh, also, that I do this activity um, that is not face-to-face. -face. It's an activity that is uh, prepared, was designed. Uh, it was not designed by us. Uh, it was designed by, um, I think it's a group from um, the Science Museum in the United Kingdom. I'm not 100% uh, not uh, sure. But um, uh, so we have um, the acknowledgement and the, the link to where you can find all this um, all this material, uh, and uh, I will share this with you a little bit uh, later. But the idea is to work with students um, on uh, discovering science in a different way. So instead of going to the, the classroom and inviting students to perform an experiment and giving them a recipe on how they are going to do that. We invite them to dive into the world of um, a scientist. How is science being done by scientists? So this, the activity that I will start the session on is called mystery boxes. And uh, what are those? Well, they are boxes that are a mystery. <laughs> Precisely that, okay? So I, I show one here. It's a mystery box. It was not done by me and it has something inside that I have no idea what it is and uh, I will need help from Nikos and Gustavo here to figure out what is, what is in these uh, boxes. At the same time, uh, you at the audience, you can also help. As I said, usually this is done on a face-to-face -face format and this is the best way because I can put them in my hand, I can feel the the different weight, I can try to smell, by the way, they have no smell. Uh, I can try to do different things with the boxes and uh, discover different uh, aspects of it that we cannot do it online yet, at least. But uh, we'll try our best to do the second best uh, mystery boxes activity, which is doing it online, okay? So the thing would be like this. I, we will replicate what would happen face to face and we would divide you in groups or uh, maybe if you were only a few, we would ask you isolated to pick up a box. We have usually seven to ten boxes and uh, you pick up uh, a box and you are invited to explore the box and you are asked to find out what's inside the box, but there are rules you cannot open or damage the box okay so those two things are forbidden so i will try to 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 make noises with the box and i'll ask nikos and gustavo and maybe you at the audience to tell me what do you think is inside the 
this uh, beautiful box okay so that's all let me just put this here a little bit better uh, okay i cannot see you but i think if you have any any question here gustavo and nico oh, to help me ah okay yeah. now i can see you people are very quiet okay okay good so let's try it out pay attention first box Is it heavy or like a, a little bit? A little bit. If I, well, if I have this to the second one and the first one, they have more or less the same weight. They are more or less the same weight, but uh, they have something inside for sure because they make yeah. knots. And it's not That's something, true. it's not an isolated thing because they are a little bit heavy. Uh, so yeah. and you can feel in this one you can feel there are several objects inside, right? It's not just one thing. Yeah, look, look. Yeah. So, they move yeah, differently yeah. inside the box. Yeah. That sounds like dice, maybe. More like playing. Let's, let's see something. Let's see if it rolls. Maybe a dice. Yeah. But there's something else. It doesn't sound metallic, right? Because no, there's still four metal. things inside. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, let's try the other one. Yeah. This looks like more granular material. Yes. Maybe, maybe rice or... I don't and they know. all make the same noise. Yeah, so they're very similar, right? Yeah, maybe it's only one type of thing. Yeah. And maybe you're right, yes, maybe you're right. Okay, third one. Okay, let's compare with the other one. It's, they're similar, but the, the second one seems like bigger objects, maybe. It's less heavy than the first one. Oh, really? The oh, this one is heavier. Oh, listen to this, Gustavo. I would say there's a ball inside. Or a coin, maybe? I don't think it's coins because coins are metallic and they can, like, when they hit each other, they will sound like metal, metal, and it's maybe, not what yeah. happens. Oh, this is interesting. Look at this. I think it's it's dice. You know, if you play dice, dice you know, like to put them on, on the cup. Oh, there's a coin in here. Yeah, it does like this, you know. The... Yes, the flipping. Yeah. By the way, Rosa, we have people here on the chat. They're starting to communicate with us. So welcome, Christina, Jenny. Uh, Christina says, from Romania, she says box one might have dice or rocks. Yes, we, we haven't talked about rocks. That's interesting. Ah, the, yeah, I'll, go yeah. with, I'll go with dice because it sounds like plastic. The thing is wow. that anything that is inside looks like a regular thing. It doesn't look like a rock. Unless it's one of those rocks that are very polished or something like this. Marbles. This has coins. Or something that is bouncing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, no, this one is similar to the other one. Oh, this is. Do you have it? Do you have anyone else? Or... This is the last one. This is the last one. It's number yeah. four, no? Yeah. I do it closer because you can't hear. Closer to. Doesn't make any sound. So it's air. <laughs> yeah. Air. Or hair. Hair. If, is, okay, I, I will tell you why why I think let's see if I, if this time I can I can show this to you. 
I, uh, one teacher had the idea of doing this once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see like this. I'm trying to illuminate it. Well, you cannot see it properly. Well, if if um, we put it in a, you know, those slides, project, well, a projector, in front of a projector, mm -hmm. you see something, a line, hair or a piece of line. There is a thread, something here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, it's interesting. I, in, I love the fact that we can discuss and talk to our colleagues and each one will have a different hint of what could be inside and uh, will make you think differently, right? Gustavo, last time that we did it together, we realized that when we are discussing, we, we, we actually improve our knowledge or understanding of what's inside the box, right? Yes, especially when you have several people working together, discussing, you know, different ideas uh, come. Uh, so that's always that's always interesting because sometimes mm -hmm. you have really, I, I think it's dice, it's dice, it's dice. And exactly. other people say, no, oh, maybe it's rocks and you haven't thought about that. So I think that's the, the richness of these activities. That's correct. Well, people cannot see you, Gustavo. They are only seeing me. Yeah, but okay, you're, so, you're, you're the, the short okay. woman today. <laughs> now, let's go to the next step. But that, now I want people to that are on the audience to, to, to help me. What else would you do to, to, to improve the knowledge that you have about uh, these boxes? What kind of experiment would you do with the boxes? What would you try to do in order to, um, to realize what's inside of the box? Maybe we'll have, stop, while we wait, you can give one idea. Yeah, I'll tell one. I'm going to stop uh, removing the spotlight so it can appear again. So I remember when did, we did that face to face. Uh, one of the teachers uh, proposed that you use magnets mm. because you know, like the coin, the, the, the third one, that oh, maybe it's, these are coins. If you have a strong magnet, they will like. Uh, be attracted mm -hmm. and then you can move the magnet and see if the objects are moving alongside or, or not that's a very good idea yeah, yeah that's that won't tell you if it's indeed coins or if it's like a different type of objects maybe you know screws or anything like well uh, while we, we wait for the people to um to write on the chat i'll tell that funny story about this box here that i didn't show So it's, it, it has the sound of a, of a coin. And I was telling last time, it was a very funny story. I was going through, cust through, um, through security control in a, a German airport. I think it was Frankfurt. And I had the, these boxes inside of my backpack. And if you see closely, they say snap attack. It was not on purpose. I mean, I just bought these boxes and made, made them wherever I was uh, actually I don't think I made them. No, it wasn't me. They were done by Priscilla and she gave it to me. And uh, so that's why I don't know what's inside these boxes. And uh, I, I'm going through security and uh, uh, the, the security person uh, grabbed my backpack and say, you have a little, some boxes inside your backpack. What are they? And I look at him and I say, they are mystery boxes. And the guy, and the guy say, "Okay, what is it that they have inside?" And I tell them, "I have no idea, <laughs> no, because I, I actually didn't know what's on inside the boxes." So the, the, the guy opened my backpack and pulls this this box that says "Snake Attack," and immediately releases and say, "Okay, you have to explain what is this." And I said, well, I actually don't know what's inside the boxes. And I had to explain to him the whole story. And I you know I, could, I was already sweating, imagine myself going to jail because of these mystery boxes. And then the guy said, OK, am I allowed to, 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 to put them through the x-ray? I said, of course. And then he goes and he comes back and tells me that this one is a coin. And I asked him not to tell me the, the rest because I don't want to know what's inside. And so it was so funny. And I had to explain to him why we use it. Uh, etc. So that was a very, very fun uh, uh, activity. You know that reality show, on, I think, on uh, National Geographic in the airports that they stop people that are like, you no know, smuggling things. 
That oh. sounds like a scene from <laughs> the reality show there for security. Uh, uh, what's inside that box? I don't know. I don't like, know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So no, I never out. thought about it. I never thought about it. The moment that I was facing the situation, I say, "Oh my God, what am I going to do now?" Pri, what did you put inside the boxes? You know, I, I had no idea. And one of them has some something that is powder, and I think, okay, that is going to go super wrong. But no, it went well. And actually, at the end, the the, the security person found that the activity was very nice. Okay, so there is a question here. Tell us what kind of experiment would you do to the ah? So Gustavo, you wrote that. I wrote that, and I'm with you for answers. Okay, uh, well, uh, one thing that we can do, and uh, I think it's a very nice idea, is to find boxes that are similar to those, and try to put inside the things that you think are inside, and uh, and then compare the sound, compare the weight until you. You, you move into the direction of uh, discovering what's uh, inside the box. Um, or you can see if it floats. Well, this one wouldn't work because it's cardboard. So if you put it in water, you, you will uh, destroy the box and you don't want to do that. Um, Why put it in water? To see if it floats? If it floats. Um, exactly. If it floats, you can, you can have two two boxes with different materials to see if it floats or not. Or you, I don't know. There are many experiments that you can do, but you cannot damage it. So people say, okay, if I put fire and there is something inside and it uh, and it melts, well, imagine that uh, you go to the doctor and the doctor think, uh, oh, you have some kind of uh, bacteria inside of you. So they would would it be okay to burn your tongue and see? <laughs> If the bacteria is dead or not, that wouldn't be convenient, right? Or cut your throat to see what's wrong. With, why do you have uh, your throat is aching? So that's not how uh, this should be done. So you cannot damage the, the object that you are st studying. Actually, you should interact the least as possible so that you actually understand the, the object that you are studying without changing the object. So that is something that is important. Um, okay, Jenny, so yes, Jenny, Jenny commented here that uh, you could simulate the auditory perception. Simulate the auditory perception. Yes, 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 yes. Now this activity is a very inclusive one because it works for anybody with any uh, preference on on, on learning uh, on learning style because it's something that is uh, has some you know tactile you can perceive uh, the, the box because I feel the things falling in my hand. I can listen to it. I can see, well, I see nothing. I see, I see a mystery box. Uh, I can smell if there is some uh, smell. So it's it's very good for the students to, to work. But it's also very good. Uh, and if you are expecting me to open the box, that's not going to happen. Never. Because that defeats the purpose. And the idea here because people say, oh, scientists don't know what they what they're saying. One day they say one thing, the other day they say another thing. And the, there is a general lack of perception on how the scientific method works. So, you know, even in this little box, while discussing with Gustavo, I thought it was one thing. Gustavo gave another suggestion. I changed my mind or maybe I said something or made a different noise. Instead of doing like this, I did like this. And that changes the perception of the object that is inside of the box. So the way science is done is like that. Scientists in general are working with mystery boxes. You know, we don't have the opportunity to pick up the box, open the box and see what's inside. I give you one example, working with COVID, trying to find what is this uh, nasty virus and uh, how, how does it uh, evolve? I mean, we don't have it, we don't have the answers. We have to study the virus. There is no, no answer that we can look at the end of the book. Or for instance, if I want to study the sun, I cannot go there and open the sun and, and study what is there. There are many, many other, um, other things uh, like that. So scientists are working always with mystery boxes. We don't know until we find enough evidence that uh, uh, shows us that reality is probably like this. So that's what scientists are doing. They are gathering evidences and because of the, through the analyzing these evidences, 
they are concluding something. Then they discuss with colleagues. They share with colleagues around the world their discoveries. And the more this sharing and collaboration is done, more quickly science will progress. And uh, that's why science is such a beautiful thing because it requires collaboration. It requires people to exchange information. And uh, it's a language that is, uh, it's used all over the world. I mean, look at the beauty of how quickly we discovered some vaccination and some uh, some uh, medications that mitigate the uh, the symptoms of um, of COVID. This was because there were so many people collaborating and there was investment in science, which is a beautiful thing. So that's the first activity that you should do when you want to introduce your students to the scientific method. You don't even have to tell them that you were doing that. You just have to engage them in the beauty of the science discovery. You might think that it's too overwhelming for them not to be able to open the boxes. So you might do two things. One is you might buy enough boxes uh, so that you can have empty ones and the material that you put inside the boxes and other materials and invite the students to try and uh, replicate the boxes that you made. And they will discover like this without destroying the box that you give to them. They will create another one that is unlike. It's a very good way for them. Another thing, if you really think, okay, no, I have to let them open one, you can use the one uh, that has a coin, for instance. And uh, okay, I know it's a coin, but I don't know which coin is this. It's a Portuguese coin, it's a euro, it's a dollar, it's a real. I don't know, I would have to test. So, you can give a clue and say, okay, it's a coin, but they have to discover more. Or you can let them open, but when they open the lid, you can always say, leave a message that they will discover only when they open the, 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 open the box. Say so there's always something else that you can discover. So that, is, that means that even when we say, we're pretty sure this is what it is, there's always the possibility to discover something else that we haven't foreseen at the beginning because our model was wrong or because the instruments were not precise or because I just didn't see the whole picture. Like for instance, Newton theory. Newton was not wrong. Newtonian, Newtonian physics works very well on planet Earth. If I consider that gravity is a force, it works very well for experiments that we are doing here on Earth. It only fails if we go to places where gravity is stronger or where the speed is closer to the speed of light. Then Newton fails and we need Einstein. And who knows where Einstein will fail? So all of these are things that we, we discover as we progress in our understanding of science. Okay, so mystery boxes are a unique and really fun and amazing way to get your students interested in science. So what I will do now is I will walk you through uh, the steps of inquiry, but we will start with doing something jointly. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share this mirror. Okay. Gustavo, can you confirm that you see my mirror? We see a blank canvas. Yeah, exactly. So I need your help now. And um, I, I will try and take a look uh, at YouTube, you are down here. Uh, and I would like you to tell me, maybe Gustavo and Nikos, well, Nikos have been silent there, but maybe Nikos can, can help now. Uh, I said all my ideas last week. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but now the, the idea here is to, to try and move from inquiry-based learning to the scientific method, okay? So I will click here and I'll create one, one sticky note here, or maybe I won't. Ah, now, okay. And uh, the sticky note, the first one, is for me to write down the first, the first step of the scientific method, okay? Why scientists are doing science? Why do they start? Gustavo, you were a scientist. Why did you, why did you want to do science? What was the fun part of doing a research? I was not a scientist. I am a scientist. Never you are a scientist. True story. True story. Sorry. Um, become a scientist. Once you be begin, you it's for for life. 
Uh, I think that the, 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 the interesting part was trying to understand something that is not fully understood yet. Understand so like to, Okay. Uh, understand yeah. something. And something that is people know, don't know okay. enough, enough about it. So to, okay. to be like on the edge of knowledge. Now, Nikos, what a scientist would do once they are curious about something, what do they do? You have to unmute your mic. Of course I do. Uh, they ask a question, they form a, a hypothesis. They make a hypothesis. hypothesis. Well, actually, in fact, before they make a hypothesis, like in the mystery box, I did an experiment first. I was curious. What's inside? I made an experiment first. Okay, so you can do it. Or you, you might not, but uh, okay, that is not the color that I want. Is this okay? Another color. So I can do an experiment. I can do it or not. It doesn't matter. Okay, it's one thing that I can do. Okay. And then you do the hypothesis. And then what? What is the next step? There's something missing here. What? You have to read what other people have already researched ah. about the subject. Okay. We're not going on. What uh, is known about the subject? Very right. Before making the hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can do, propose anything that's not it's already proven that is not wrong. Right. Yeah. Right. Sure. And then you make a hypothesis. And then what? test it how do you test you have to design an experiment uh, right experiment yes so or simulation i design an experiment or simulation right and then what there is nico's turn now <laughs> <laughs> I do the I, I do the you are the scientist man <laughs> you are too not really well, uh, I designed, I designed... Uh, let's say social scientist so yeah you design and you you I don't know you build your team and you try to 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 to, to make it happen so you do the experiment right yeah you perform the experience or simulation right and then what? Now it's back to me. Then you compare the the results of the, ex, the experiment with no. what your you model... collect you collect the data. You collect the data, right? That's the, yes. the you collect the data. And then after I collect the data, what do I do? Then you compare the the, the data with what your hypothesis. Uh, uh, expected. Mm -hmm. So I analyze the data and conclude, and then I can check my hypothesis, right? Mm -hmm. If this is in align, align in my hypothesis, I move forward. If it, if it is not, I have to do the whole process again, again and again and again and again, mm -hmm. until my data is in line with my hypothesis. So either I change the experiment because it wasn't the proper one, or I have to change my hypothesis, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. After I do this, after I conclude, I move one other step that is a very important one, which is I discuss with my team. Because maybe I, I oversaw something, I forgot something. Maybe everything was okay, but I forgot that the experiment is introducing an error. The experiment is not perfect. So something like that, right? And after I have discussed, there is one more thing that is important. What is it? Maybe the most important one. To communicate. I communicate. I publish it. Right? I publish, I publish, share with other with other with the other communities. So this is how someone will check, okay, this is your hypothesis, this is the experiment you did, this is the data you collected, and they have to have access to all of this 
So the peers will say, okay, your conclusion is right. And they will, they will try to, to reproduce your results, maybe with their equip equipment, with their data. And maybe there are other explanations, right? Makes sense? This is the scientific method, correct? Yes. So let's compare with what we did with the mystery boxes, shall we? Okay. Was everyone curious to know what's inside the box? I guess so. Huh? You want to, you want to know. I bet that you, if you were here, you would be poking me and saying, please open the box, please open the box. Right? I guess so. Then we did the experiment. Huh? We retrieved prior knowledge, even though we didn't have uh, an information about what other people thought about this box. If we never heard a coin bouncing or a ball rolling or a dice rolling, we wouldn't be able to say, oh, this is a ball or this is a dice or something like this. We wouldn't be able to do that, right? But because we know, we made our hypothesis. Oh, this is a ball together with something smaller, maybe a click or maybe something else. And then we design an experiment, and that's what we said. We find boxes that are similar, objects that are similar to the ones we think are inside, and we build the box. And then we make it, compare it with this one. Is it the same? Yes, it is. I'm collecting the data. I analyze the data. I shake both boxes at the same time. I weight them, and I try to figure out if they are actually seeming to be the same thing. I discuss with Gustavo, I discuss with Nikos, we change, exchange perceptions, maybe change the initial hypothesis, do over again. And after I'm confident, I say, okay, we think there is a box and something like this inside. So it's the whole scientific method. Okay. Faza? Yes. Uh, just show, to mention here, there is a comment uh, by Christina. Uh, she, she, she com commented something that I, I I think it's important here to this if the material of the box itself also influences the experiment, right? Because it, it, we are we will focus on what's inside, but maybe sometimes the, the box itself also plays a part, you know, on the totally. sounds or uh, completely agree, which makes mm -hmm. it even more beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, even more and, beautiful. And you see it's uh yeah. Last week, when you while we were struggling with the internet connection, uh, Nikos and I we spent some time, you know, talking and making parallels with this activity with real scientific research, and this is something that really happens uh, several times in in scientific research. That maybe you think you discover something new, and then it was the equipment. So I must uh, like give an example. I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, there was like uh, someone announced that they detected like a neutrino mass or something like that. And then after, you know, it was something really, really groundbreaking. But after like analyzing the data and then other groups did the same thing and didn't detect anything, they found that was like a, a, a table that was not shielded correctly and it <laughs> produced the data that uh, was interpreted like something spectacular, but in the end was just uh, mm -hmm. uh, something in, in the experiment itself. So that's a similar situation mm -hmm. uh, to just that which is Christina just commented. And maybe sometimes just just focus on what's inside and what, what you think it is, but sometimes something that is unrelated to the subject itself. Completely correct, completely. And that's the beauty of science. You know, that's the beauty, so many possibilities. That's the beautiful part of it. That's the beautiful part of it. Okay, um, well, we will move uh, a little bit uh, forward now, and uh, we'll now dive into the world of inquiry-based learning, which is the methodology. Uh, it's basically inquiry-based learning is the scientific method in the classroom. And you know this, you can probably see how the three of us are completely in love with science and these discoveries and how this, this is so super cool. You know, doing something, doing something and getting a wrong result is awesome because then you do it again. Oh, I think it's like this or I think it's like that. And there's nothing like the true of discovery. Oh, I think I found an evidence here. So this is the feeling that we would like your students to share. Not that we want everyone to become a scientist, we don't at all, but at least they will have 
uh, a very good understanding on how the scientific uh, method works, okay? So I'm going to share my screen again, and this time I'm going to share with you a PowerPoint, if I can discover it here. No. Okay, and I will put it in presentation mode. Okay, I hope you all can see. So, yes. in quantitative learning, uh, what it is, I mean, that's what we're going to navigate. You know, you know already what it is. It's the scientific method implemented in classroom. How it is implemented, you just saw an example. Um, what is the content to be delivered with it? I mean, any content at all, we are going to go through that. And which technology can you introduce and why should you do it? So let's go a little bit further with, with this. So we where uh, how implement you, you more or less understood, but then what type of content can I deliver? Well, that's simple. Take a look at this picture. I'm not going to, to, to we, don't, we don't have all the time now, but if, if, if you consider these images, you can see that this little boy here on the left, it's exploring nature. It's, you know, ac actually every baby is born a natural inquirer. You know, all of us are born scientists. So the, 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 the child is picking up a leaf and it's exploring it. What is it? You know, how is it done? It will touch with the hand, sometimes put in their mouth. This is the baby here on the right, you know, the baby is having fun with pasta. So the baby is always doing inquiry. The job of the baby is through the senses, discover the world. The baby is a scientist. You are not telling the baby what it is. The baby is discovering by themselves. A doctor, the doctor, the doctor is asking the lady, what is the problem and trying to from the data that the, the, the doctor is acquiring from that data trying to make sense out of it this this lady here is analyzing uh, the, the the ingredients of a product to see okay if these ingredients are here it's because this is a good product or not so inquiry is something that we do all our lives of course i mean when you see a baby crying here uh, a boy doing a tantrum well it could be inquiry because you know the baby think if i make a big tantrum i will make uh, i will convince my mother to give me what i want which is not always true sometimes kids only have emotional overload and that happens this picture may be the doctor harassing uh, the lady we never know but if we consider you know the, the scientific aspect of, of this science is everywhere i'm going to buy a mobile phone which one am i going to buy Oh, I'm going to buy one like Gustavo, because I think Gustavo is a very good scientist. And if he purchased uh, this brand, this is the brand that I'm going to buy. And I forgot to ask him. He has that one because it was given to him by his uh, sister-in-law, but in fact, uh, was not the best uh, mobile phone in the world. And I made a mistake. I didn't ask the basic questions and I bought a crappy mobile phone. You never know. So inquiry is part of our life. Being critical thinkers, it's only something that can only be built we are, if we are enough exposed to situations where we have to make decisions upon the facts that we know, that we analyze. We can only become good, good decisors if we seek for information, if we don't believe on everything we hear or read, if we are critical thinkers about everything in life. And that's your job as a teacher, to make sure that your students are going to be prepared for that. Who am I going to vote it? Are transgenics good or bad? Should I buy this or that? Is this good or bad to the environment? I need to, 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 to check opinions of people I trust. I need to check if those people I trust are actually providing me the information I need for me to, to take a decision. So you are building on the science capital of the, your students and their families. So how is inquiry helping us on that? I am presenting here uh, an inquiry based learning uh, process that was devised um, in, in several projects where I was involved. It's a very simple, very basic one. And inquiry based learning is a methodology that exists since the 60s. 
and it improved over time and there are several uh, ways to deliver inquiry based learning we are presenting here the most basic one there which is the the, the five uh, five steps but i'm also giving you a link to something that uh, divides the inquiry in a few more steps it doesn't make any difference the process is the same it's like me discussing with Gustavo and Nikos which, which were the steps of uh, of uh, the scientific method. Oh, you have to read about it, you have to discuss, you have to explore, you have to do it like this. So you can add many steps, but the, the idea is there, okay? So the first step and the most important one is to spark the curiosity of your students. If someone is not curious about learning something, they for sure won't learn. Right. So if you enter the classroom and tell your students, well, I'm going to talk to you about uh, boxes. These are boxes. They are made out of plastic and they have something inside. You cannot open, but I guess what's inside is right. It lost all the, the, the appetite. So if you tell the students, oh, I have boxes here. I don't know what's inside. Will you help me discover? You are creating the curiosity. You are sparking the curiosity of the students about the topic you are about to teach. The second important thing is never to answer to the students a question that they don't have, right? I can enter and say, oh, this is super cool. It has a coin inside. You, you spoil the whole thing. They are not interested to know. You, don't, you didn't even raise their, their, their interest about this box, right? So first, you have to make them want to know. Are you curious about it? You wouldn't pay attention to the mystery boxes if you weren't curious to know what's inside. You wouldn't have paid attention to me. You would fall asleep. So this is the most important part, okay? Never to give an answer to a question that the students don't have. The second thing is to ask your students, to invite your students to, uh, to think about how things are done, how they are built, how do they work. So you have to ask your students, what do you think? What is your idea about this? And you will invite your student to make their own hypothesis. And there, there's a learning curve for you and for your students. Students, unfortunately, are very, very afraid to make mistakes. Because usually in school, when they make a mistake, they are punished for that, which is a very wrong thing. Making mistakes is the best way to learn. So you should commemorate you should celebrate mistakes because that's a good way for everyone to learn so you are asking them what do you think about this topic right and it doesn't matter if it is right or wrong right why do we have eclipses oh i think we have eclipses because someone goes there and steal the sun okay fine so let's make a make an experiment and see if you can corroborate your uh, idea with evidence and that's why you ask them, okay, make your hypothesis, and then you should build an experiment that can help you gather evidence in favor of your hypothesis. And you need to give a lot of help to your students so they know how to, 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 phrase, to frame the hypothesis in a proper way, and they know how to build an experiment that will actually help them prove if their hypothesis are right or wrong. Right? Imagine I say, yeah, I'm going to, to my hypothesis is there, there's a coin here. Okay, what experiment you're going to make? Oh, my, my experiment, experiment will be to drop coins in the floor. Well, that won't work because the floor and the box are different things. So you have to help your student in the design of the experiment. And then you invite the students to do the data collection, to analyze the data and see if the data makes sense to them. They will exploit the data, they will experiment, they will interpret the data, right? They will learn how to work with data. This is a, actually a very important part of the, of the research. You do experiments with your students all the time, right? I imagine it, it, regardless of what discipline domain you're using, for instance, you, you are an art teacher and you are teaching your students how to paint with uh, pastel. You know, they will experiment this, this work, no, this didn't, this combination of colors worked perfectly, this didn't. It's always experimentation and interpreting the result of the research that they are doing. The next step 
is to know how to draw conclusions, proper conclusions, right? So, okay, we say, okay, this is a coin because it makes the noise of a coin. What if it is a button? So we should compare with other conclusions, with other hypotheses done by the others. We should discuss, review, reflect. And as Gustavo said, there can always be a glitch in the experiment. There can always be a glitch on your line of thought. So discussing with other people is always a good idea. Sharing everything, your data, your methodology, your conclusions, is always a good idea. And finally, have the students discuss their results and uh, trying to make connections with everyday life, trying to discover all possible answers, right? So this is how the scientific method works. And this is how you should perform all the experiment with the students, making them go through all these phases, okay? Now, how can I make it more, um, besides being um, rich enough because I'm following the, the, the scientific method, how can I make it uh, more digital? So you can always enrich your uh, scenarios, your lessons with tools. I mean, you can deliver the scientific method, you can deliver inquiry-based learning using any tool that you want. For instance, you can uh, have, uh, you're going to, 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 to discuss with students about uh, climate change. You can present a YouTube video where, you know, the problem of climate change is presented by maybe Julia Roberts. Uh, she has a very nice uh, video or maybe uh, Whoopi Goldberg. She has another very nice video about this as well. So you can introduce with a video. Then you can uh, use a Padlet, uh, which is a, 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 a mural board like Miro, where the students can go and put a post-it about what they think about climate change. You can invite them to explore Wikipedia or other, uh, other uh, information repositories where they can find more information on the topic. You can use Kahoot or Metimeter to ask questions. You can invite them uh, to use again Padlet or maybe uh, a Word document or a spreadsheet or a PowerPoint to create uh, their hypothesis, to collect uh, their, the information that they have retrieved, to create a logbook, for instance. You can uh, plan an investigation with them where they will do with hands-on material or they can use an existing simulation. So they can use uh, FET labs. Uh, for those of you that are physics teacher, chemistry or biology teacher, FET has a very nice uh, collection of interactive simulations or the Concord, uh, Concord uh, Consortium uh, or UNREIT. They, they have several simulations that can be very useful for you and your students to explore. Or a simulation like Stellarium, the Worldwide Telescope, there are plenty of simulations that you can use. And then you teach your students to collect and analyze data using a Google Sheet or an Excel spreadsheet, where they will learn how to work with data properly, how to make an error, how to make a plot and analyze the plot and make sense of the data. You can use you can ask them to use Canva or a Padlet again to conclude uh, their their to make their conclusions and then present it uh, and discuss with others, publishing it in a poster. You can again use Canva for that. So so on and so forth. You can enrich the digital experience with, of the students uh, with with anything. And for those of you, especially the learning from the extreme teachers that have uh, created just created a makerspace. You can invite the students to present their results by recording something in the newly uh, in the newly created uh, media booth or uh, by using the interactive board or I don't know, be creative in how you're going to explore the solutions to to deliver this uh, this uh, inquiry based learning methodology to your students. Um, I, I also um, uh, would like to, to, to share with you. Um, uh, a link uh, of um, material that were created under a project called Platon that you saw bubbles. Uh, I, I will go to the project in, in, in a moment, but there we have uh, actually created a very nice repository of resources for those of you that never did inquiry before. And I will go through each of them in a moment. I just wanted to, to end the part related to inquiry to tell you the following. Usually, uh, you will feel when you start doing inquiry-based learning, you will feel like uh, you're 
you you were using a bicycle for the first time it's not easy to 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 move from the traditional methodology from the expository methodology to the inquiry based learning and you might you will for sure feel a little bit uncomfortable so you can start by doing a very structured inquiry okay i like to, to give this example you can enter the classroom and uh, tell the students well today we're going to bake a cake and a chocolate cake these are the ingredients they say how we do it and this is the result well is this science of course it is it's science at its best and it's a very flavory nicely flavory favorite science right i love it i love the the, the, the recipes but uh, it's a recipe it's not inquiry there's nothing for me to discover except the taste of your recipe but you can also try to make a guided inquiry and then it would be the same okay sorry this is not inquiry you can do structured inquiry the structured inquiry would be for instance if you enter the classroom and you say okay today we're making a chocolate cake these are the ingredients this is how you do it this is the result but i don't know how many eggs i should use and so you're giving just a little bit of degree of freedom to your students they can put one egg two eggs three eggs ten eggs 16 eggs and see what happens you're probably thinking 16 eggs well i have to tell you just on a side note I, I am Brazilian, I live in Portugal, and when I arrived in Portugal, I read the first recipes of cakes, the famous Portuguese cakes, and it will read, you know, put uh, flour, milk, and 16 eggs, and I go like, 16 eggs? Oh, no, no, this was a typo for sure. Then I go to look for another one, and it says 13 eggs, 14 eggs, I said, these people are crazy. But it's true, they actually use that many eggs, and it's delicious. So I discovered, I did this, well, it was not, it was inquiry because I tried to reproduce the very nice pastry done in Portugal with less eggs. And guess what? I failed miserably. It wasn't that, that good. You know, the good ones actually have lots of eggs. So this is structured. You don't structure it. You don't lose control of it. Or you can do the guided one. You give the recipe, but you say, you know what? These are the ingredients, but I don't know the quantity of any of them. Just explore yourself. And then the students will have to learn to take notes and see, OK, if I vary all the ingredients at the same time, I will never know which one made it all go wrong or it all go right. So if I if I change each ingredient at a time, then there is, I will know if that component of the my recipe is the one that is not working well or not working wrong or is working wrong so this is the guiding inquiry the open one would be if i enter the classroom and tell the students make a cake guys i don't care about the ingredients or how we make it it's open and it, it, okay of course this is just an example of course you can do that in any topic that you're going to teach but you don't have to do it to all the topics that you teach because it requires more time and we all know that you have a curriculum to follow. But when you do an open inquiry, you can try to accommodate several curriculum content as ingredients of your recipe. And you can invite the students to explore much further and their competence profile will improve much faster. But you will lose control, which is perfectly okay. You don't have to know everything beforehand that's why we have now uh, we have internet to help us that's why we have artificial intelligence to help us you need to be the travel companion the ones the one that will guide the students towards the most efficient way to maximize the learning experience of the student that's the most important part that you can do and it's truly important to guide the students through this journey so that when they finish school and they will find out many open inquiry challenges in their life, they are ready to embrace it because now they know how. Only you can help them do that. Of course, family can also do, if they go to a museum, science center, they can also do that. But if you do that as often as you can, then you will be, you will be greatly improving the competence profile and the preparation of your students for the future they are about to embrace. And you can do it 
in 10 hours, in a whole school year, or in 45 minutes. There are several activities that go through the, the, the inquiry methodology in different timing. And nowadays, there is more and more material coming uh, online. In, in this uh, the Platon project, you will find here uh, several things that will, will help you navigate not only inquiry-based learning, but also interdisciplinary learning. You will find lots here. Uh, so you will find a MOOC that will help you navigate all the components. You will find uh, materials that uh, were done by teachers and were produced by us. You will even find something that is super useful, that is an assessment toolkit that will help you uh, assess your students while using quality based learning. You will find materials in Portuguese, in Greek, in Spanish and in English and uh, you will also find examples of teachers that have implemented it this is just one example of uh, of a platform that uh, can help you there are others and i i don't know which ones are the best the best one is the one that works for you and i guess i said a lot of things again as usual here is my contact uh, you are free to contact me at any moment in time or anyone in the team and i will stop sharing to see if there are any questions from the audience or any comments that i should pay attention to let me check here i lost the youtube channel it's here um Baza, i i think there was some, some issue with the broadcasting because oh. on youtube is still showing the daily slides i don't know if you see the same uh, oh. at least in my screen here is still showing the one of the first slides so I don't know what's going on uh, I'm looking here on YouTube and I see the whole thing Gustavo it's, yes but in YouTube it's, and the whole thing is here okay so maybe it's on my side here that's like maybe, maybe. I don't know the others had some difficulty as well can you type something uh, you were able to follow or not? Yeah. Anyway, there is well, always a lag between the, exactly. the delay. It is recorded in any case, and if you okay, have... Teresa say it's okay, so it's, it's on okay. my computer. Good, good. good. So uh, it is recorded, and uh, this will be will appear in the learning from the extreme uh, channel. I'm sure that those of you that were not able to be here with us you will be able to, to, to follow this uh, later. And we are here to, to help you with uh, any difficulty that you might, uh, you might encounter. Uh, we are here to help you. Uh, and believe me, whenever you start using the, this methodology, you won't want to go back. You, you won't be able to go back because you know you get addicted to it whenever i'm doing face-to-face -face activities and even when i am online i try to use the inquiry based learning in here it's a little bit difficult because there is a lag and i don't want to spend more than uh, or much more than one hour uh, but um, we try to do it every time we're training teachers and support teachers when they are training the students to follow this um, this approach because it's it's really powerful. It works really very well. So I don't know if he, if we already have uh, anything from the participants, Gustavo. I lost my YouTube uh, window now. I uh, don't... They're just saying that the, the transmission is okay. So okay, I, I think they're following it. So it's less call for questions or comments before we okay. end the transmission. Yeah, so you have, if you have any question, please, it's now or never. This is the moment for you to, 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 to present them to us and maybe- Now or forever be silent, huh? Exactly, forever be silent. <laughs> so let's give them uh, some, some yeah, moments. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, I mean, in the world of inquiry, there are different ways to present. Uh, there is the more academic way of presenting it and many studies that uh, have been done to, 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 to prove what works, what doesn't work. And there are many opinions. And uh, of course, you are free to embrace uh, the one that uh, suits you best. Uh, of course, this is always the best, uh, the best idea. Okay.
no comments. So, Gustavo, maybe mm -hmm. you can, we can end. Let me just uh, announce that uh, next week uh, uh, we are going to have uh, a webinar about programming with microbits. Uh, uh, I, but... I, it's, it's not the next week, um, in two weeks from now. No, no, no. It's next week, November 2nd. We are changing. Okay. Yeah, it. yes, that's 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 what. Exactly. Yeah. So we, that's what I was going to say. It's not mm -hmm. going to be on November first because it's a holiday for several countries in Europe. So we exceptionally are going to do it on a Thursday, which is November second. Okay. So November second, we we will release a um, a newsletter uh, in tomorrow or the day after informing you this about this and the next uh, two ones that are coming after that so from now until december 20th we have a webinar per week and more activities are coming we're going to have the tea with bits which is opportunities for the teachers to discuss with each other good example good practices and experience that they are having so all of these are coming pay attention to your to your um mail to your email because information or through us directly or through your national coordinator or on social media is going to come about this okay so i guess we can finish here nikos you want to have a, a final word besides of course thank you both thanking both of you for being here and uh, organ and gustavo for being the good maestro of this uh, webinar uh I just want to thank our colleagues around Europe for being much more with us uh, in the, the webinar. I would like to thank Gustavo for his uh, coordination and, of course, Rosa uh, for your brilliant input one more time. Uh, stay tuned on our social media, on the platform, on our website for the announcement of the next webinars and see you all next week. That's it. So see you next Thursday, exceptionally. Exactly. And for CT. And yep, see you. Have a nice day. day.